Welcome everyone. In this video, we're doing a 15.8 problem. We're here in fall semester 2017, so a pretty recent exam, at least at this time. Uh, and the claim is right, 15.8, we're doing cylindrical coordinates. Right, so let's go ahead and read this problem. Set up, but do not evaluate. The iterated integral for computing the volume of a region D, if D is the right circular cylinder, Okay, so here's the nice picture here, whose base is the disk r equals 2 sine theta in the xy plane, and whose top lies on the surface z equals 8 minus x squared. So you may be saying to yourself, do we really need a triple integral for this? Do, can't we do this with just a double integral over polar coordinates? And the answer is yes, just because we have a relatively nice bottom surface, right? The bottom surface here is going to be the xy plane, so technically you can do it with a double integral. However, with volumes and whatnot, I really want us to get in the habit of using triple integrals. So I really believe that this was meant to be a cylindrical question. That's why it belongs in 15.8. All right, another question you might be asking yourself is, do we really need cylindro cylindrical, or what's the tip-off that we should be using cylindrical instead of Cartesian, right, with just x's, y's, and z's, also known as rectangular coordinates? And there's two things, right? So first of all, you can see that the surface here, or I guess the region that we're integrating over, you can see that there's a nice circle going on here. So the fact that there's a circle, this is a good indication that cylindrical is probably the way to go. But then also we can see that the base here is given to us in terms of r and theta. So that's a big indicator, right, that we don't want to use just x's, y's, and z's, that actually using r's and theta's, you know, like cylindrical coordinates, that this would be a useful technique. All right, so let's go ahead and maybe start with this. We're going to go ahead, and again, we're trying to find a volume. So that's going to be doing the triple integral of 1 dv. And now I'm going to go ahead and switch this into cylindrical coordinates. So let's see, we're going to have, again, triple integral. I'm going to have dz, dr, d theta. And you should be yelling at me right now, right? I'm missing something here. Whenever you switch into cylindrical, like polar coordinates, we need to have an r. So instead of 1, this is going to be 1 times r, a.k.a. r. Now let's go ahead and start figuring out what our bounds should be. So for z, right here with a nice triple integral going on here, imagine that I'm traveling in the z direction. The first thing that I seem to enter through is the plane z equals 0, right? It's mentioned here this xy plane. So we go through z equals 0, the xy plane first. And then we seem to exit through this top surface up here, right, given by z equals. So that's good, right? z equals. This is a bound for z, so it needs to be z equals. 8 minus x squared. You say, ah, but we're doing polar. So in polar, right, or sorry, cylindrical, uh, right, there shouldn't be any x's. So let's go ahead and rewrite this. So z is equal to 8 minus, and instead of x, we're going to put r cosine theta, and we need to square that. So let's go ahead in our bounds over here. We're going to write 8 minus, and I'm going to do r squared cosine squared theta. So something like this. Again, remember our goal is not to evaluate. We only need to set this one up. All right, so imagine if you were to integrate with respect to z, though, right? then there would be no more z's, and all we would have left are x's and y's. So this is, again, kind of like smashing this three-dimensional structure into just two dimensions, into the xy plane. So if I was to go ahead and maybe draw the xy plane, here's x's and here's y's. And based on the picture here, it looks like the circle, it seems to maybe just barely touch the origin. So maybe I'll use blue here since it has a blue outline. And it seems to be in the positive y direction, right? So kind of maybe something like this. There we go. Maybe that's our r equals 2 sine theta. All right, let me go ahead and shade this in for, oops, that's not my shader. Let me shade this in, just to really identify what is the region that we're going over. Let me use purple, and let me just really identify over here. You can barely see that, that that's purple as well. All right, so next up we need to figure out our r bounds and our theta bounds, right? Where do these start and stop? And so kind of if you think about what if theta equals zero here, almost even making out like a table or something like this. So we have theta values and we have r values, you know, kind of back when we were first maybe plotting graphs. 
right? And kind of the classic theta values you would start to plug in is maybe 0, pi over 6. You could do pi over 4 if you'd like, pi over 3. Let's do pi over 2, and then let's kind of regroup and see where we are at that point. So at theta equals 0, so remember we'd be pointing in this direction, right? Theta equals 0, we would have 2 sine of 0. Well, sine of 0 is 0, so we'd get 2 times 0, and that's just going to be 0. So that's saying that we would have kind of this point at the origin, right? We, our radius would be 0. So, okay, that's fine. Let's figure out at pi over 6. So at pi over 6, we'd have something like this. Seems to be a, a point of intersection here. So let's see, at pi over 6, sine of pi over 6 would be 1 half times 2. That's going to be 1 altogether. All right, next one up, you could do pi over 4, you could do pi over 3. Let's do pi over 2 really quick and make sure that this is seeming to, uh, to be correct. So at pi over 2, we would have 2 times sine of pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2 is going to be 1, so 2 times 1 is going to be 2. Okay, so that's from 0 to pi over 2. You can see as you continue to move, right, you always seem to be exiting through this circle here. The other thing that we gain from this picture is that quite often we get in the habit of going from 0 to 2 pi for our theta values. But you can actually see that you map out this entire circle and end up back at the origin as you travel from 0 to pi. So we don't actually go all the way around from 0 to 2 pi, we just go from 0 to pi. And that maps this entire circle. Okay, the final question is, should this R value, 2 sine theta, is this how we enter the region or is this how we exit the region? And hopefully from this, you can clearly see that this seems to be how we're exiting the region. We always seem to enter the region through, well, the origin. It seems to be always 0, 0, right? We always seem to enter in through this orange dot and we exit through these red dots. So our lower limit of integration for R should be 0. As soon as we take the tiniest step, we're inside of the circle. And we seem to exit through this 2 sine theta. So 2 sine theta theta. I did not leave myself a lot of room up here, so let me rewrite this one more time. 0 to pi, 0 to 2 sine theta, the integral from 0 to 8 minus r squared cosine squared theta, and again we're integrating the function r, so that's 1 in cylindrical coordinates. And again this is dz dr d theta. All right, and that right there is our final answer. Again, our goal was to set up, not to necessarily evaluate, and that's good because right, evaluating out cosine squared, that takes a step or two because right, we have to use the um, power reduction formula, all that sort of stuff. So I'm happy that we just had to set this one up. All right, there you go. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time.